thank you very much the organizers for the invitation and uh, Antonio for a nice presentation of the project uh, in general it's been a it was a pleasure to work with my co-author long-standing and uh, with all experts uh, as you said economists and political scientists and here I present a paper <coughs> which is titled No Taxation Without State Assigned Property Rights. So we all know where we started that the property rights affect development and the taxation positively affects development. Uh, Antonio just told you about the taxation uh, governance benefits and the um, uh, uh, other benefits and we also our paper alludes to a very, the title of our paper alludes to a very famous uh, slogan of the American Revolution, right? No taxation without representation. And we also know that property rights is the key since uh, um, uh, Douglas North and um, um, uh, uh, Ronald Coe's work that property rights are also key to development. But the link between property rights and taxation is understudied, and this is uh, both uh, uh, relevant for individual level studies and uh, cross-country cross or other polity studies. So our <laughs> motivation, our research question was, does difference in property rights regimes affect taxation? And with this question in mind, we straight away focused on the uh, Sub-Saharan Africa region because here we observed a very clear difference between uh, um, uh, property rights regimes. Uh, I want to say that property rights allocation and the, uh, how they are allocated and how they are upheld is a very complex story. Uh, do not take me wrong, and we made uh, a reference to a lot of research that points to it. However, it also could be, for the sake of the argument, categorized into two broad types, and which uh, was uh, based on research by Catherine Boone, who did a lot of research on land in uh, Africa. So this uh, status property rights regimes where central state is the land allocator and dispute adjudicator, and neo-customary, so-called neo-customary uh, rights regimes where state-backed local leaders exercise authority over land allocations and land dispute adjudication. So if you look at the uh, uh, situation empirically in sub-Saharan Africa, you can see that uh, uh, the average share of land governed by the uh, traditional authorities is about 60%. This is based on the, uh, also on a quite reputable data by Liz Island Wiley and colleagues who work a lot on Africa land uh, situation. And uh, what is good for <laughs> statistical analysis, right, that there is a lot of variation in this data from 96% in Somalia to only 2% in Rwanda. And I'm taking this uh, for the last date that we have in our data set, which is 2015. So the question is that more specifically research question that drives our uh, research is, does it make a difference for taxation what type of authority assigns and uphold property rights on land? And again, we straight away switch to land, and I, I, can, I can talk more about why land and, uh, in, in QA, but I mean, if it, our scope condition straight away was sub-Saharan Africa and the different types of uh, authorities that manage property rights and the uh, uh, land came into um, kind of question um, naturally. So our argument, very simple, it does make a difference. So uh, within the social kind of uh, contract framework, we um, argue that why would individuals pay taxes to the state when they depend on the traditional authority to sustain their property rights. So therefore, uh, where property rights are assigned and upheld by the state, individuals are more likely to ascend to pay taxes to support the authority upon which their property rights uh, depend. Property rights bring people into contact with the state. They make the state more uh, <laughs> uh, uh, legitimate in the eyes of the uh, uh, citizens and also the uh, tax 
tax demands that the state solicits from citizens also make sense to the, to the, to the individuals in such a situation. Uh, so therefore our hypothesis that we have tested that where the extent of the state formalization of individual property rights on land is greater than citizens more readily, readily ascend to pay taxes to government. And we test this hypothesis using um, two um, uh, data, one imp individual level data and then cr cross country analysis and the empirical setting is sub-Saharan African countries. So I will start with the country level analysis, although in the paper we go the other way around, but I think for the sake of the presentation, it's actually a better. So just to show you the like kind of associational, right, association between the extent to which the uh, 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 state assigned property rights are associated with the taxation. So we use our own data set that we um, developed and um, this is an extent and quality of cadaster as a measure of state land formalization of individual property rights and our dependent variable is share of tax on individuals um, as a share in GDP uh, or income tax again uh, you would argue or oh, why it is not land tax and I can answer this in the in the uh, Q&A but I will tell you straight away that the variation and the, so the, the first of all the, co the collection from land and property taxes in these countries is so low and the variation is not e non-existent so it's unfortunately due to the data limitation that we couldn't run this test meaningfully Yes, and uh, uh, we run several uh, kind of specifications, but our main specification, we only use uh, country fixed effects and time fixed effects and uh, up to four lags of dependent variable. So, but first of all, what is cadaster? Because this is assumption that uh, um, we find it uh, interesting that uh, the um, kind of the, 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 the good grasp of the general public is not there on, on cadaster. So, Cadaster is a public record containing information on uh, uh, first land asset, it's uh, or real estate assets, and second is the uh, party that holds interests over this asset. So it has to have three three pieces of information: who, what, and which rights or obligations. If uh, there are different varieties of uh, uh, public records of, on land. And, and this should be in all in one kind of database, if you wish, in one, the, 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 these two elements. There are different varieties of um, land registration systems, and not all of them have all these three elements, and therefore it is not cadaster. So we have, we have quite high requirement for what cadaster is. And then we ask a question, where there was, a, where, was there a state administered cadaster? was the cadaster narrative or cartographic and how much of the country's territory was covered by the cadaster and then we for each country in the uh, in this case sub-saharan country for each year p uh, which is our period is determined also by the availability of data on the dependent variable but our original data set runs over 1000 years and uh, 160 countries and uh, we compute the cadaster indicator for every country year by multiplying these three uh, score components by one another. So uh, by uh, design, uh, customary lens or neo-customary lens are not included. And we, for this specific data set, we excluded cadastrified state land. So that is the work that we did additionally compared to our original data set. So we excluded because uh, we talk about individuals and their incentives, so it would be strange to uh, use the state, uh, the, the land that the state uses. So this is an um, um, example for you, although it's, by the way, from Ethiopia, where most of the land is state land. But this is a difference between narrative cadaster and cartographic cadaster. Narrative cadaster is just a description of the land parcel runs from that big rock to that big tree, or it is a cartographic representation with some relevant information, like the quality of land, uh, and um, uh, etc. So this is just a, to show you a big, quick kind of uh, pooled uh, uh, bivariate association. So you can see that there were, uh, we have a great extent of cadaster. There is also higher uh, share of uh, revenue. 
on income tax and uh, this, the, the, the slope for the near customary uh, uh, property rights uh, as a percentage of her land is even stronger, the relationship. So then we run a relation, the, the regression analysis. This is, as I said, there are several specifications. I show you one with four lags of dependent variable. And so what we find that the, the transition from no cadaster to full cadaster leads to about half percent percentage points um, increase of revenue from uh, in this uh, tax, individual taxes. And we also calculate long term 2.28%. So as you can see, it is not super strong, the, ma the magnitude, but uh, here we go. So we find a positive association, uh, uh, and uh, uh, but we, in, with this data, we are not able to test the postulated mechanism, right? So that the property rights increases consent to taxation, and then it, uh, it leads to increase in tax revenue. For example, that would be uh, enough for the paper by Matthias Van Home, right? So just that the, this is a, a, a great informational capacity by the state, not necessarily that it impacts uh, kind of individual calculations of people to consent or not to consent uh, to pay tax. So uh, therefore, we use individual data uh, from the seven route of Afra, Afra barometer. It's 42,000 individuals for thir from 32 sub-Saharan African countries. And our dependent variable is the ascent to pay tax. Uh, and the, our independent variable is the question, how likely is that that if the respondent went to the government offices to find out who owns a piece of land in their community? Uh, um, so we call it assessed information on land. We argued that <laughs> You can only find information who owns land from a government office if government has these records, right? So that is a little bit of an um, uh, uh, um, assumption here. And we use um, uh, order at probit, probit regression. So this is a, a distribution of uh, access, access to information on, on land variable. The lighter colors represent high access. These countries, these two countries are excluded because we look at the sub-Saharan countries, but this is all countries from the Afro barometer. And uh, here is our results. So just to say uh, so that if you are very likely to find information from the government about the ownership in their communities, you are also more likely to agree with the statement that the government has the right to pay, to make people to pay taxes. So. I think this is at least preliminary support to our argument that the type of public authority who assigns and upholds property rights matter for, uh, uh, for the strengths of the fiscal contract. And the uh, uh, state assigned property rights, they incentivize citizens to respond to the state's tax demands as this supports the authority underpinning their property rights. And we find evidence both in the cross country and individual uh, data. As I said, the magnitude of our estimates suggests that the state-led formalization of property rights perhaps not the most potent answer to the fiscal problems in the region, and the even full catastrophication at the, as it stands at the moment would not allow a median sub-Saharan Af African country to address the need of about 19% of GDP to finance uh, uh, sustainable development goals. And this is based on the data from 2015. I think that the now gap is even larger, uh, right, as I understand. And therefore, the, so that, that is not the most potent answer e to the question. I mean, probably with, if we take that the catastrophication improves also land and the property taxation, this, the results will be a little bit more um, rosy. But I still think this is uh, kind of not the, the silver bullet to the question. So. This is some kind of limitations for the research. For example, Fabra Afrobarometer, for unknown reasons to me, doesn't have measure that uh, uh, measures this property rights situation of the respondents. Assumption that we should do, and uh, um, um, yes, and more work needed on the different types of traditional authorities and different levels of state authorities, and also what happens when. They are neo-customary rights, but they are also 
recognized by the state. So it's like two-tiered situation. We also need to consider this because this is increasingly the case, for example, in Kenya, uh, uh, communal rights, right, uh, uh, community rights have been catastrophized to a certain extent. This is the country that I know better, but I know also that in other countries this similar work uh, goes on. Yes, I uh, don't have anything else. Thank you so much, and uh, I would be happy to take questions.